And Naomi, you have been thinking a lot about um, movements and how they could get their messages into the media better. Um, and we have three examples here of movements that have tried to do that. And um, what are some strategies they could use? What's happening right now is this is the conflict for the next decade at least. Uh, you know, people who hold power are centralizing their power more and more. What we're also seeing is that there's a global consciousness of people that transcends ethnicity, transcends uh, nationality, transcends religion. This recognition that it's a global family. Most people just want to, you know, live in peace and raise their families. And the gatekeepers want to keep us at our th each other's throats. When the AIDS drugs started to come, we wanted them to come fast. And the FDA at that time was considered the most immovable bureaucracy in Washington. We basically said, you know, if our targets, our enemies are willing to sit down with us, uh, we're going to give them an earful. And we're also going to show them that we've done our homework. It was a very complex disease. It was a complex message. And we had to boil it down into sound bites. We had to practice that so that the country would be on our side. Polling showed immediately that 80% of Americans wanted the FDA to change the way it did things and to give people with AIDS the drugs that they were demanding. Um, and that's, and it, if it weren't for that public sympathy, I'm not sure we would have had the success we had. We realized, and it was really frightening, that the government, despite the fact that we proved that it was, we were being damaged, the government came back and said, they, they, they confirmed the 56% birth defect rate, and they came back and said, well, we don't believe it's related to the 20,000 tons of chemicals there. We believe it's related to a random clustering of genetically defected people. <laughs> and, and, and what it said to us is that government is not going to help us if we work in the system. And what we need to do is work outside the system. We need to go to the streets. We need to carry the signs. We need to make the politicians accountable. And in fact, that's what we did. They came to a point where they completely shut down internet and, uh, and telephone, so we couldn't communicate, we couldn't spread the messages out to the world, we couldn't upload uh, material and so on, and people couldn't call each other on the phone to organize a meeting. But actually, the day there was most people on Tahrir Square was during those days where you couldn't even use a phone, and that's why it was all by word to mouth. And we, there was around two million people in Tahrir Square of the day known as the millionaire, and that was only from spreading the message. You know, times have changed in America. It's not fun and games anymore. It's no longer a time when people are not going to get hurt, when we're going to have due process. We have a law now that says that they can hold us indefinitely. You know, it's going to be more and more like Egypt or more and more like, you know, emerging democracies where bad things happen to activists. Everyone around the world now has to learn how to be a reporter. Everyone in the world has to learn how to double source things. Everyone in the world has to learn how to be a publicist. This is what democracy is made of. And it makes me crazy to live in an advanced democracy and talk to people like this who are struggling to create an independent news media and hear from revolutionaries all over the world who risk their lives to talk to the press or to create the press or to hold the press accountable and have us diss the press all the time instead of holding the press accountable and showing up to do what we can to get our message out to the press. So I'd like to put that out there and ask but you just a really to, part can of I that. Just, can I just add one thing? Yeah, go ahead, Omar. Okay. I think there's a big difference uh, between the Middle East and here because here yeah. there's so many democratic ways of working and lobbying. It's completely impossible in the Middle East. What did it in the Middle East and in Egypt was one thing that people had no more fear and they were ready to die. And that's, that's what made it in, in, in the Middle East and that's what's making it today because people, they came to that point where if they cannot have freedom, they'd rather die and they're not afraid anymore. And that's what's making it down there.